a very good morning class 12th welcome to the channel by seema makhijani and the topic of the day is aldehydes and ketones we are still on that particular chapter i have already uploaded last three videos on the same chapter so the next coming video is we are going to do a chemical reaction of aldehydes and ketones where i'll be adding ammonia and the ammonia derivatives now ammonia is a molecule which looks like this with a lone pair and it is because of this lone pair that it is a electron rich identity or we call it as a nucleophile fine it is also called as a lewis base so this is all information that you should know about ammonia for this particular topic now when i talk about ammonia derivatives what i'm trying to say is one of the hydrogen is to be removed and against it you can add some group which i am referring to as z which means the common formula for ammonia derivative would be like this where one of the hydrogen has been removed and a new identity z is being added so ammonia also falls into this category if your z is h fine so that is the first reaction that we would be doing followed by that the z can change to oh then this is called as hydroxyl amine if your z changes to nh2 this is called as hydrazine if your h changes to hydrazine with one h replaced by benzene this will be called as phenyl hydrazine and if you change your z to the hydrazine but with the nh2 you have an nh after that you have a benzene ring as it was in the upper case but along with this benzene ring you have a 2 and a 4 nitro group attached to it so this identity would be called as 2,4 dinitro phenyl hydrazine moving on to the last the last identity is which looks like this i'll rewrite it here the nh2 the z identity here is nh with a co followed by nh2 so in this case your identity z becomes this this identity is called as semi carboxyl all right so these are the reactions that we have to do in this particular topic i'll be reacting each one of them with aldehydes and ketones you can also have an identity which can be called as a normal amine this also falls under the category of ammonia derivatives because your z changes to r group so these are the reactants that we would be requiring in this particular class before i move on to the reactions examples we would first need to do the reaction mechanism because you should understand the need of the ph control required in this particular reaction the ph has to be between 3 to 4 that is you require a mild acidic medium which means it can neither be highly acidic nor can it be basic so we require this ph this topic of why do we require a ph control would be clear from the mechanism part let's move on to the mechanism this is your carbonyl group it could be an aldehyde it could be a ketone the first step is protonation because your medium is slightly acidic you do have protons in it and this proton has to attack onto your aldehyde or the ketone now in the aldehyde or the ketone oxygen being more electronegative pulls the pi electron towards itself causing your carbon to become positive so your h positive has to attack oxygen leading to an oh here while you have a positive charge here that is you end up in a carbo cation so step 1 is attack of a proton to form carbo cation moving on to the step 2 the step 2 involves this carbocation attacks by the ammonia derivative 
so your ammonia derivative is NH2 with something as I just explained. The important thing is this lone pair. It is because of this lone pair that it acts as a nucleophile and at the positive center it would go and attack the carbon like this. That means you would end up in the carbon with an OH and here you would have your NH2 with a Z which gets attacked but this was positive, this is neutral. Since the lone pairs are donated here, this nitrogen gets a positive charge. So the second step is attack of the ammonia derivative onto the carbocation formed in the step 1. Moving on to the step 3, I would continue from here. In the step 3, as you very well know, nitrogen is an electronegative element. It would never be stable if it has a positive charge. To stabilize itself, it loses a proton by accepting this electron pair of the bond pair towards itself and causing H positive to be lost. So the third step is loss of a proton. You remember the first step was gain of a proton. The third step is loss of a proton which means proton is just the catalyst. Now let us write the reaction. You have a C, you have an OH, you have a nitrogen which has a Z identity. One H is left and the H positive leaves giving you this identity formed. Now this identity then leads to the loss of water which is the requirement in the reaction. In the loss of water OH is a good leaving group because of the negative oxygen because it is electronegative. So when this OH wants to leave then the carbon requires electrons so it pulls this pair of electron towards itself hence simultaneously you would have your H positive also released. So your OH and your H positive will lead to the formation of water which means there is an elimination happening your carbon loses OH nitrogen loses the H Z remains intact and you get a double bond which means if you have a close look at the reaction in a shortcut what we can say is that if there is any aldehyde or a ketone and it combines with our ammonia derivative at a pH of 3 to 4 it only leads to the loss of water like this leading to the formation of a carbon double bond N and the Z is intact. So this is the short method of writing the chemical reaction. So for all the reactions this is what we would be following. The two hydrogens left over in the ammonia derivative will be pulled by the oxygen and there would be a water loss and you would end up in a product formation. Now as I said there is an important thing which was in the mechanism required was is the control of pH. Why is this control of pH required? Under this category we could either have a low pH or it could be a high pH that is it could be a basic medium or highly acidic medium. Now what is our problem? Our, our problem is your ammonia derivative has to attack the carbocation via this lone pair. But if the medium is highly acidic then the proton from the acidic medium will go and attack the lone pair of your ammonia derivative hence you will not be left with any lone pair on the ammonia derivative to attack the carbocation. Have a look. This is what we did. The lone pair was to attack the carbocation. Now if there is an H positive that is highly acidic, this lone pair will be used up and this reaction will not take place. So your step 2 won't happen. So that is the first reason. Now in case the medium is basic, now then what? The first step of the mechanism is protonation of the carbonyl group by the attack of the proton so that a carbocation is formed is our first step. Now in case there is a base, if there is a base which means there won't be any H positive, in the presence of OH minus you will not get the carbocation formed and the reaction will not start. Fine. So you can neither have a very low pH nor can you have a very high pH. We will now be doing the reactions under this category. The first reaction that I am taking is your aldehyde or a ketone whatsoever it is and you have ammonia. 
that means your z is the h since we do not require it what exactly happens is oxygen and the 2 h are lost and the product formed would be whatever you started off with double bond n and n h this product is called as imine which means if my starting product is a acetone that is a propenone and i want to treat it with ammonia then the reaction would involve water loss like this and would lead to the formation of a product which would look like this the name of this product will be propenone imine what i'm trying to say is the imine follows the prefix of the name of your aldehyde or ketone since here the name of my reactant was propenone so the name of the product is just propenone followed by an imine is that fine moving on to the second example your starting material is an aldehyde or a ketone and your ammonia derivative is a 1 degree amine you can only use 1 degree amine because you require two hydrogens to combine with oxygen to form the water which is to be lost in the reaction so your product is n r now this product is called as a substituted imine so if your starting material here is again let me take it to be acetaldehyde so if this is acetaldehyde the product will be called as acetaldehyde or ethanol and then you would have n alkyl because of this imine is that fine this is also called as the schiff's base which is used as a test for aldehydes and ketones it changes its color so you get a pink coloration with a schiff's base so this used is used as a test for aldehydes and ketones moving on to the next example your aldehyde and ketone will react with hydroxyl amine now what is hydroxyl amine it has an nh2 and an oh what are we interested in oh and h2o there is a loss of water so the product formed would be whatever you started with with an n and an oh the name of the product is oxide which means if your starting material is methanol then the product is called as methanol oxide fine moving on to the next example the next starting material you require is hydrazine what was hydrazine it was nh2 and along with another nh2 the reaction again involves loss of water the product formed now would be whatever you started with double bond n with an nh2 the name of the product is hydrazone of course the prefix is dependent on what you started with let us say i started with benzaldehyde c6h5cho therefore my end product would also be benzaldehyde hydrazone so the name is benzaldehyde followed by hydrazone fine moving on to the next is a phenyl hydrazine now what is a phenyl hydrazine phenyl hydrazine is exactly like hydrazine but in this case one of the hydrogen changes into a phenyl group so this is your phenyl hydrazine you only have two hydrogens here and an oxygen here so your product again by the loss of water molecule would be c double bond n nh followed by a benzene ring the name of the product depends on what you started with if i started with ethanol the product is ethanol phenyl hydrazone fine moving on further the next example is crucial this is 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine now hydrazine was nh2 nh2 in this case 1h is replaced by the phenyl ring okay so the structure of 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine would also have two nitro groups here and here it's a bulkier structure and it has a conjugated system of single and double bonds so when we make the product here the product formed is your oxygen nh2 are lost 
and you end up in whatever you started with along with an N and an H, a benzene ring with two nitro groups at 2 and 4 position. The name of the compound in this case, let us say I started with acetone. So, the name of the product would be acetone followed by 2,4 dinitro phenyl hydrazone, not hydrazine, it would be hydrazone. The importance of this reaction is this is a test for aldehyde and ketones both because this particular compound of yours is a orangish red PPT. So, if you add 2,4 DNP, this is in short form it is also called as 2,4 DNP. This is the reagent if you add it to something and you get a reddish orange PPT, it concludes that your starting material is an aldehyde or a ketone. Fine. So, this will be used as a test. So, you should know if it is written the compound is showing a 2,4 DNP PPT means it is either an aldehyde or a ketone. Moving on to the last example under this category which is your semi carboxide. Now, what exactly is a semi carboxide as we did in the first sheet? It is also one of those reactants for which we do have a reasoning question. The semi carboxide looks like this. Uh, sorry, I will rewrite it NH2. Instead of hydrazine, you have NH followed by a CO and an NH2. Now, the important thing about this semi carboxide is you have two hydrogens here as well as here. Now, which out of these two hydrogens will combine with oxygen to lose a water molecule? And the answer is this and not this because the lone pair of this nitrogen is involved in resonance with this carbon of the double bond O's. That is, there is a resonating structure here which looks like this NH C with O minus a double bond here and an NH2 which has a positive charge. So, it is because of this resonance the lone pair on this nitrogen is not available for to attack at the carbocation as we did in the reaction mechanism. If you remember this was the reaction mechanism you require this lone pair to attack the carbocation in step 2. So, if this lone pair is not available, it is utilized in resonance, the reaction will not happen. That is why only this hydrogen and this oxygen would combine. So, the hydrogen which is much away from the carbonyl group would be combining to give you the product formation. So, the product would be whatever you started off with a double bond, this hydrogen goes nitrogen, NH, CO, NH2. Just mind you, this is a common reasoning question. In the semi carboxide, which nitrogen or the two hydrogens, which particular two hydrogens are used? The ones which are farther away from the carbonyl. The, let us take the starting material to be ethanol, which means your final product would also be named as ethanol semi carba zone is the name. Is that fine? With this I conclude my class. Hope that you have understood the reactions of aldehydes and ketones with all the examples done as well as you have understood why do we require a pH control where acidic medium will call protonation of the nitrogen which will not have any lone pairs to attack while the basic medium will not allow the carbocation to form. So, this is the end of the class. I hope you are liking the video. Please keep sharing, subscribing and forwarding it to the groups where you have more students to promote my channel. Thanks a ton. Bless you loads. There are many videos on this particular chapter. I have uploaded them in the playlist. Aldol condensation, Canizero's reaction, Wolf-Kishner, Clemenson's reduction, Tollens test, Fallon's test all are covered. Thanks a ton. Bless you loads. Keep in touch. Keep watching. Excel in chemistry. Bye.